I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the facelifted Jaguar F-Pace, a vehicle that I personally think is one of the best looking SUVs on the road. The Jaguar F-Pace has really turned around the fortunes of the Jaguar brand since this crossover launched several years ago. It is by far the most popular vehicle that Jaguar has built in the last decade. And even though this brand's slinky sedans and two-door coupes and convertibles are really where my particular heart lies, the F-Pace is a very good mid-size luxury SUV. As we'll find out later in today's video, it's a good car to drive. And now, thanks to the 2021 facelift, I think it even looks a touch better outside and the interior is a more sumptuous place to spend time as well. Now, the bugbear with owning a Jaguar, at least here in Australia, has always been that the warranty has been a little bit shorter than some rivals, particularly since Mercedes-Benz moved to a five-year warranty more than a year ago. Well, Jaguar Land Rover are now doing exactly the same thing. This car comes with a five year warranty and five years of roadside assist included. So I think that gives you just that little bit of extra peace of mind to buy into something a little bit more left field, which I think is what a Jaguar F-Pace kind of is compared to a Mercedes GLC or an Audi Q5 or you know the cars are a little bit bigger than that as well. So we're gonna take a look in the cabin, we're gonna have a look at the boot, and then we'll take this F-Pace out onto the road to see what Jaguar's largest SUV is like to drive. But before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. The refreshed exterior of the Jaguar F-Pace is really quite subtle, and that makes sense because this was already a great looking SUV in my books, but the interior was starting to get tired, and that's been addressed in the 2021 changeover to the F-Pace. Basically, the entire dashboard shape has been redone, and that's unusual for a facelift. It's actually quite a costly change, but in this case, it actually really benefits the Jaguar F-Pace. Now the standout item is this new slate touchscreen, which gets closer to a square format, if not quite entirely square. It's really snappy. It's what JLR call their PV Pro system. You can see it responds to the touch relatively well. You can pair up your phone with Bluetooth. There isn't wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. But we do have those technologies via USB cable and it works really well with such a large canvas on this display. Now, there's still a pretty cool trick climate control system down here where you push and pull the controls to change things like your temperature, your fan speed, heated seats and the like. That works quite well. You also get this new uh, steering wheel that's already been seen in the refreshed XE. I think it looks really great. Love this small little airbag cover. Now the actual buttons themselves don't always respond perfectly to the touch. I found myself having to hit the next track button a couple of times here and there, but eventually it gets through. And then we look through on this particular car at a fully digital instrument cluster that's very configurable. You can put media, trip computer information, a full map in there. You really can do whatever you like, which is pretty great. And quality feels excellent in here, both in terms of the materials that have been used, which all feel pretty plush, but also the way the car is screwed together. If you go looking for them, you will find a few creaky noises in some of the components that move, but it's really nothing more than what you'd expect to find in an Audi Q5 or Q7, for example. So you know, I don't think it's really a detractor for the F-Pace. Comfort is great. Even on the base seat, it's really sumptuous, really comfortable and supportive. But if you upgrade to these 18-way adjustable seats, you get things like inflating bolsters and a thigh extender that will let you really find the most ideal driving position. Now this car is elegantly specified in navy blue outside over this very light cream leather and open pore wood trim. And the good thing about the F-Pace is it's actually a lot more customizable than rival vehicles in terms of colors and specs. So you don't have to get a black pack, you can. Most of the cars on today's launch of the F-Pace had it, but this one is more traditionally specced and I think it actually comes up really nicely. You can also go for blacks inside or a tan or this cream. There are other choices too. And later when the SVR hot version arrives, it'll have a really focused cabin. 
Now, in terms of practicality, we've got wireless smartphone charging that actually holds the phone and works, which isn't always the case with wireless charging. Big cup holders, an adjustable armrest with a big box and two USB ports, both the new style and the old style, and large door bins too. So up front, there's really quite little to fault about the updated F-Pace. Here in the back of the F-Pace, it's a good opportunity to remind ourselves of what this vehicle's competitors actually are. And a bit like the Lexus RX, the Jaguar F-Pace is something of an in-betweener. It's a little bit bigger than a Mercedes GLC, but smaller than a GLE. And the same goes for the BMW X3 and X5. So you're getting a relatively big medium SUV, if that makes sense. And that does mean that the F-Pace is only a five-seater. If you're looking for a seven-seater, Jaguar can't help you, but you will be able to step across the showroom floor into something like a Range Rover Sport, which you can get with a third row or even the smaller Land Rover Discovery Sport, although the third row in that car is a massive punish. Here in the Jag, what you get is a generously proportioned five-seat car. So in the second row, you will be able to get adults in without too many complaints. For myself at six foot, headroom is no issue, even though this car is optioned with a very large panoramic sunroof. Legroom behind the driving position is generous. I've got several inches. Tow room is great as well, because there's a cutout beneath the seat. Now the middle seat is a little bit of a perch and the tunnel in the floor is quite high. The actual footwells themselves are pretty big, so I think you could actually get somebody in the middle if you needed to. Plus the amenities back here are okay. We've got air vents, keep the air flowing on a hot day. Heated outboard seats in the rear, always a luxurious touch on a cold morning. Those soft materials and stitched leather in the back uh, continue from up front, as does the open pore wood trim, very nice. And also the intricate grills for the Meridian sound system that you get at this level in the range. There's also a flip down armrest with two cup holders and map pockets on the back of the seat. Although if you're looking for USB ports in the back, you won't find them. There's only a 12 volt socket. Moving around here to the back of the updated Jaguar F-Pace, you'll need to be a Jag fan to spot the differences with the facelifted car because they are quite subtle, but they are absolutely there. The new tail light design kind of matches the slimmer headlights, which I think have actually helped the car. There's also subtle changes to the bumpers and some new alloy wheel designs, including the 21 inch wheels optioned up onto this D300 SE that I'm driving here. Now you do get a power tailgate as standard that operates quite promptly and gets out of your way. And it reveals a decently practical 650 liter boot. Now, as you can see, it's really square. The load height isn't too high. It's also not that low, not as low as uh, the XF Sport Brake was, for example, but you will get several large suitcases in without too much of an issue. A few clever touches, the cargo blind gets up and out of your way so you don't have to keep moving it. Underneath the boot floor, you get a spare wheel, which gives you a bit of confidence for country touring. What we also have is some netting over here for delicate stuff, a couple of hooks so that your bags don't flop around, 12 volt socket, tie down points, we don't get remote releases to drop those back seats from the boot. That's one thing that would be convenient. Also, there's no lock button on the tailgate, so you do have to close it and then lock the car, which I think most people will be able to cope with, but some rivals have integrated a dual button. All right, let's look at the practicality. Let's now head out onto the road. So what's the updated Jaguar F-Pace like to drive? Well, with any facelift, there's never gonna be a radical change to the driving dynamics of a car, but in the case of the F-Pace, that's a good thing because Jaguar had already approached this SUV when they developed it to be one of the best driving vehicles in its class, and that is a characteristic that the F-Pace has been able to maintain over the last several years. That being said, there are some changes to note particularly in terms of the engine lineup, and I'll get into those things in this video. And in fact, we'll start there with what you can get under the bonnet, because in fact, there's only one engine that truly carries over in its entirety from last year's lineup, which had 18 different variations. That's now been reduced to only six. So while there's less choice, there was arguably a few too many variations of Jaguar Land Rover's products before the most recent rationalization. And given that you can still customize the car to a significant extent, I think six is probably about the right number. But the range starts with the carryover unit, and that is the P250 
four-cylinder petrol or turbocharged two-litre unit from Jaguar Land Rover's Ingenium modular combustion engine family. And that produces 184 kilowatts of power and 365 newton meters of torque. And I spent all morning today driving a base P250 running on 19 inch wheels. And it's actually a really lovely unit. Uh, you might think the base petrol isn't enough to motivate the F-Pace, uh, but actually it is. It feels entirely content driving this car. There's heaps of torque available just off idle. And actually the four cylinder petrol has a really nice Z note uh, when you rev it out so it even has a bit of kind of enjoyment in the oral sense to it i think it's a really good spot for the range to open and given that car is considerably more affordable than it used to be and it has more standard equipment all in all it's a pretty competitive offer particularly when you consider that the entry-level petrol engines you get in most of this car's rivals are significantly weedier you definitely wouldn't call the f-pace p250 weedy that being said, the six-cylinder engines are undoubtedly the desirable ones, even if the P250 four-cylinder is more than enough. I think a lot of people are going to be, uh, you know, swooned by the diesel or the petrol six-cylinder option. Now, the car I'm driving now is the D300 inline-six uh, turbocharged diesel, uh, and for 2021, it also picks up a 48-volt mild hybrid system. Outputs have been bumped slightly to 221 kilowatts of power and 650 newton meters of torque and this engine is just effortless. I know that's a cliche to describe large displacement diesels, but it's true. Uh, there's heaps of torque on offer here. If you were thinking of towing with this car, the D300 is where you'd probably want to put your money. It doesn't really sound like a diesel, it just has that kind of low bassy note when you accelerate that I think is really quite appealing actually it, it has some intent to it uh, it also delivers the best fuel economy uh, of the lineup uh, particularly because there's no more four-cylinder base diesel um, this is actually the only diesel you can get on the F-Pace at this point well, when I say at this point I mean this is probably the only diesel I'll ever offer again on the F-Pace particularly because of the news we've had in the last month that Jaguar will transition to an all-electric brand over the next five years. And so if you're thinking of buying a car like this with a combustion engine, there's not gonna be that many more chances after this. And I think it's, it's an interesting moment to be driving or will probably be the last diesel-powered uh, Jaguar F-Base. And it's a good one. There's also a six cylinder petrol engine, which is really quite zesty. That's the P400, it produces 294 kilowatts of power and 550 newton meters of torque. Again, assisted by a 48 volt mild hybrid system like the diesel. Surprisingly efficient, you'll do kind of low double figures in combined driving, despite the fact it's really quite sprightly, just as we found in the Land Rover Defender, where you can also get that engine. It sounds good. It's got heaps of go. You're probably detecting a thread here that there's no bad engine on the F-Pace and that is precisely how it is. But if you want the biggest and the baddest, the F-Pace SVR facelift will be arriving in about June, July, 2021. That's a five liter supercharged V8 putting out 405 kilowatts of power and 700 Newton meters of torque with about a four second zero to hundred time. Uh, and that thing sounds phenomenal. So if you're in the market for uh, you know, a GLC 63 or an X3M, it's probably worth waiting to test drive the facelifted SVR as well. Now, in terms of ride and handling, that's actually where the F-Pace shines the brightest. Uh, and a lot of that is kind of bedded into the fundamentals of this car. We've got JLR's IQ AL2 aluminium chassis on this car, and that keeps it nice and light. The most fascinating thing is that the large-ish F-Pace is actually considerably lighter than the E-Pace small SUV that Jaguar sell, and that's because it's you know, effectively all aluminium. And that impacts everything about the way the F-Pace gets down the road. It means the ride is more supple because there's less weight to have to damp. It means the turn-in is more immediate. It means the limits of this car in corners are higher. You know, it is still a relatively tall SUV, but in so many ways, it drives like a station wagon. The dynamics are really impressive in this car, and particularly so in the lower end specs that benefit from a smaller alloy wheel, 
a 19 inch wheel on the base vehicle and a chunky tire, which actually just gives the F-Pace an impeccable ride quality. This navy blue D300 that I'm driving now has optional 21 inch wheels. 20s are standard at this level and the ride is still impressive though you definitely get a bit more road feel. It doesn't diminish massively, it's still very bearable. But this is one of those cars where I think occasionally less is more uh, and the package is now so well rounded at the entry point. I do question the need to even step up to the big wheels and uh, you know, more and more equipment. I think you can spend, you know, kind of less than 90 grand on road in this car and have a pretty nice, luxurious SUV experience. But still, the, the six cylinder engines are super desirable as well. There's better road holding and more grip than in a GLC or an X3, I reckon. The steering's lovely. It's not packed with feel, but it's super precise and accurate, and the ratio is perfect. So you get as much steering as you expect you're gonna get when you start to turn the wheel on this car. You sit relatively high, a feature probably inherited from the Land Rover vehicles that uh, are also produced by this company, so the view out's good. It's not low and slinky and legs right out forward like a Jaguar F-Type, but that's okay. So, you know, even though it's not traditionally Jaguar-ish, it still has lovely dynamics, supple ride, good handling, a great set of engines, and it's pretty refined as well. Uh, and you know, the big, the big elephant in the room has been the three year warranty for the last few years. Not many people really want to take a punt on a Jaguar with a three year warranty. Uh, you know, reliability has improved, but it still hasn't been quite up to the level of some rivals. But I think with a longer warranty and also five years of roadside assist, I'd be a lot closer personally to you know taking a punt on this car because it is just so much more desirable than something like a four-cylinder GLC I reckon everything about it is significantly more luxurious yeah it's an interesting car definitely worth a test drive if you're in the market so those are my impressions of the updated 2021 Jaguar F-Pace there's still a lot to like about this SUV. It's super elegant to look at, in my opinion. The interior is a pleasant place to spend time and it's now even more tech-centric. And the driving dynamics are just about as good as you'll find in this segment. And of course, there's the fire-breathing supercharged V8 SVR still to arrive here in Australia. Now, given the longer warranty and all the other benefits of the car, are you considering a Jaguar F-Pace? Do you own one now? What's your experience been like? Let me know down below in the comments. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.